Hi, I'm Penny Dix, Astro Coach, and welcome to tonight's in-depth look at the full snow moon in Virgo. The moon was actually full this morning at 9.17. Okay. So, it might be a snow moon, but are you going to feel left out in the cold? I don't think so, because this is a very healing moon. So that the coldness and the bleakness of the recent astrological landscape that we've all endured can be melted away by the warmth of the sun in Pisces. So how does this translate into what we can experience from this full moon on the world stage? and also personally. Well, tonight I'm going to spend a little bit of time, first of all, to some extent keeping the astrological jargon out the way, although it will probably creep in, but I want to explain about the, the energy of Virgo and also the energy of Pisces. Because it's a full moon in Virgo, the sun has to be in its opposite sign, which is Pisces. So let's have a look first at the energies of Virgo. And what I want to say is whether you're a Virgo or not, or whether you are a Pisces or not, these two signs will be active in some part of your natal birth chart. Now, hopefully, from what I say about the qualities of both Virgo and Pisces, you'll get a sense of the area of your life that perhaps you have these kind of ways of behaving. That's the best way to get a sense of what area of your life this Virgo full moon is putting under the spotlight. So, Virgo. Who is Virgo? Virgo is a symbol of purity. It's a symbol of, it's, it's dedicated. It has humility. It's a perfectionist. Virgo always strives for perfection, honesty. And to be quite honest, it can exhaust itself in that process. Virgo can see its potential in what it can achieve, but it's also critically self-critical and honest. So it finds so Virgo finds it very hard to complete a project, and this can cause anxieties. Virgo also can be seen as too pedantic, but if we didn't have Virgos, we wouldn't have very good bookkeepers, accountants, and tax people. It's also about service to others, but I don't mean in a demeaning sense, but it's about how we serve ourselves? Do we have principles? But also, how do we serve others? 
And maybe most importantly, how do we serve the divine mind? Now that's my word to describe what I feel is the all of the all, the amazing intelligence that created the universe and everything within it. And I really feel it's so important that we all find the word that vibrates and resonates with us to represent that energy. So whatever resonates for you is your word. For me, I use this word, the divine mind. But we've got to look also at the opposite sign of Pisces because this is where the sun is shining its light so the moon can be full. Pisces has a numinosity to it. And the sun currently in Pisces, happy birthday to all you Pisces out there. It's your season. But the sun is helping our psyches and our souls to thaw after we've been, it, it's almost like we've been through this period of great sickness and in a sense, the planet has and still is going through a great sickness. And Pisces energy gives us a chance to heal. But I want to just go back to Virgo for a moment because Virgo strives for perfection. And striving for that per perfection brings up anxiety. Virgo is not very good at just being still. It needs to be doing something. And if it is sitting still, then Virgo's mind is going to be working out what to do next, working out the agenda, the routine. But Pisces can have that stillness because Pisces, in a sense, is about stillness and that connection with the numinous that on a level that Virgo continues to question and analyze even when it does find that peace and stillness. But it'll still say, really? So that the dark side of Virgo tends to manifest as doubt, uncertainty, anxiety, and of a sense of never being good enough. And that's whether that's Virgo's personal self-development or its dedication to a project. But now let's just have another look at Pisces. The sun is in Pisces bringing healing light to the sort of culmination of its yearly cycle through the zodiac sign. And after the Pisces new moon, which we have next month on the 13th, the sun finally returns right back to where it started on March the 21st with the spring equinox. And so the whole zodiac cycle begins again. And also, in a sense, our own cycles begin again. Um, 31st of December isn't really the end of the natural year. But the 21st of March heralds this journey into a new astrological year. Pisces and Virgo are what we call mutable signs. We have fixed, cardinal and mutable, but I'm just going to talk about mutable. Because what this means is that both Pisces and Virgo and if you are a Virgo, or if you are a Pisces, or if you know any Pisces or Virgos, have a think about it. They tend to be more flexible and malleable and movable. 
And even though Pisces is a water element, Virgo is an earth element, they still kind of complement each other because our opposite signs in astrology always complement each other. And this is because of, with Virgo and Pisces, their mutual mutability. So remember that whether you're a Virgo or a Pisces, the qualities expressed by both signs will be evident in some part of your birth chart. So I'm just going to give you some key Pisces words now to have a think as to what area of your life that you may be aware that this Pisces energy um, shows itself, because that's probably where you're going to find Pisces in your chart. So we've got mysticism. We've got psychic abilities. We've got dreaming, fantasy, meditation, and the ability to inhabit that inner world in a way that is probably envied by other signs. Those are some of the qualities of Pisces. And Pisces, of course, the symbol, the astrological glyph, is two fishes, but they're swimming in opposite directions. And this symbolizes Pisces' ability to inhabit two worlds simultaneously. In other words, they can be in the physical world, but they can also be in the same time, in the same moment, in that primordial soup from whence we all came. But Pisces does not represent death, even though it's the 12th sign of the zodiac and the end of the zodiac cycle. It's more about the ability to merge with the unseen, with the unknown. And Pisces seem to have an ability to see things that the rest of us can't see. But if we look at the, 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 the shadow side of Pisces, this is where things get tricky. And you may know or may be aware of some Piscean friends or even in yourself that have a challenging psyche or sort of um, challenging shadow, sorry. So the shadow for Pisces shows itself through the addictive personality. So this means you have possible addictions to alcohol drugs, sex, anything really that takes Pisces out of the real physical world. And yet paradoxically, it wants to have those things to make it feel that it's in the physical world. But the kind of sort of longed for grounding that Pisces is seeking through its shadow when it expresses it that way it, it kind of keeps Pisces locked inside itself. So that's a little bit about Virgo and Pisces. These two really quite opposite signs, and yet you can see there are similarities. But what about this full moon? Well, let's have a look. Uh, collectively, I would say uh, the world is trying to perfect a way out of the pandemic. And I think there's a weariness that arises from that effort. Personally, I think we may find we've been having a kind of determination uh, to create perfection within a project. I mean, what are you personally trying to achieve? I thought about this today and I thought, well, for me, this is really interesting because I'm actually living out, all today I have lived out what the Virgo full moon kind of represents. So I'll tell you what, how it's affected me. Because I'm not Virgo, I do have a moon in Pisces, but my ascendant is Leo and my sun sign is Taurus. So... For me, the Virgo moon has meant I've given attention to the details 
in the preparation of this particular presentation. And in fact, my attention to the detail has been quite extraordinary. It's as if I've strived consciously, probably unconsciously, to try and make it perfect. So, um, we will see. It's what I strive for, but I always strive for that in many ways. But what is it that you are passionately striving for to kind of manifest? What's in your sight? What do you want to bring into this reality? Is it something that you feel you can never quite get it right? Well, if there are areas of your life where you've been having that kind of feeling, that's the Virgo full moon energy. You may also have noticed that over the last few days, as with all full moons, we tend to get a bit angst and it can raise anxiety levels as we endeavour to find peace. So that over the last few days, you might have been aware of heightened feelings of fear, anxiety, panic. But there's good news, and that is that these feelings will ease over the next few days because Pisces is radiating out this wonderful healing energy towards the moon in Virgo. And the sun in Pisces is linked up at the moment with the lovely planet Venus that is all about relationship. It's all about love. It's about peace. So we've got some nice energy in Pisces, sort of sending these vibrations, these energies across to that moon in Virgo. And hopefully this full moon receiving the light of that Pisces and Pisces sun will enable you to connect with that divine energy that enables you to get glimpses of what the universe is urging you to rise above. So practically, what can we do? Well, Pisces is inviting us to rest, to take time out, recuperate, time to space out, have a glass of wine, relax. We have full permission from this moon to let go and to allow the divine to be the problem solver, to fully understand that the divine has your back and is reminding you to rise above the intellectual analysis that we get from the Virgo moon and connect once more and merge with that knowing and that faith in the process. So if your physical body is asking for rest, you must give it that. I mean, let's face it, the planet has certainly been begging us to give it a break, to rest. And my sense is that even though things are going to improve, we're not quite out of the woods and we really have to continue longer to allow this healing to take place. The other interesting thing is that the virus can somehow be part of this Pisces energy, which is quite interesting because a virus is unseen. It's mysterious. It, it gets everywhere. And this is like Pisces energy, it's unseen, it's, it's numinous. The vaccine, in a sense, can come under the Pisces influence because Neptune that rules Pisces is currently in Pisces. And Neptune can represent this kind of energy that looks for healing. 
And we have to remember that alongside this, we've had the planet Uranus, who is an inventor and discovers things and finds things out. And planet Uranus is probably the, 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 the amazing planet that has helped the scientists to discover the vaccine. So this Pisces energy shows us how we can transcend our limitations by using our ability to see with clarity how the Virgo energy may be holding us in a state of self-analysis, which is mind-oriented and not soul-centered. So it is about letting go, endings of current anxieties that do not serve us to allow our minds to let go of how we think things should be and allowing the Pisces and Aquarian energy, as well as Virgo, to show us how we can rise above and allow the divine mind to come through, guide us towards the growth and the solutions that we seek. So use this full moon energy to connect with your soul. Take advantage of all this lovely healing energy. Virgo's ruler is Mercury. Its co-ruler is Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer, the asteroid that is like a centaur. So Chiron also has its energy merged into this full moon and so Chiron is really saying take a break have a rest and you know what if I could advise our world leaders if I had them all in the room with me now or all watching now I'd suggest they get out of the way of their egos and politics what they need to do is tune in to how to connect better with the collective and to listen to their gut feelings, to not be governed by numbers, to find balance so that we can all work in harmony with what the planet's been shouting very loudly at us. Then the balance and the benefits for all of us can be great. You know, if they just listen to their instinct, but I feel their governed by this Virgo, attention to detail, everything's routine, everything's listed. We need leaders that will see the bigger picture. Before I come on to your individual signs, because I know you're all desperate to find out personally how this full moon is affecting you, I just want to just mention about because we have got this challenging ongoing energy between my big boy Saturn, planet of restriction, and Uranus in Taurus. And this is, a, this, this is gonna be happening on and off throughout the year. We're just coming to the end of the first kind of hit of this. So you might have found, and this will give you a clue as to what to expect from this Saturn Uranus difficult aspect over the rest of the year when it becomes exact which will be the next time will be may june then or not until around december but whatever's been unfolding for you over the last few days if you felt like the volcano is blowing its top we i live in the mediterranean and sicily is up the road and mount etna and mount etna has been blowing her top this week. So you may find personally you've been blowing your top about various things. So what I want to say about this energy is use that as your example and think about it and think, right, if somebody is, or something or somebody is really winding you up in May and, and around December, just slow down for a minute and stop and think, how can I do this better? How can I respond to this in a way that is better for me, is healthier for me? 
And if we do that, then we learn the lessons of what this particular Saturn-Uranus transit is trying to tell us. And then the clearing takes place and the healing. So I can't promise that all our problems will melt away with this full moon. But I can assure you that there will be a thawing from the metaphorical snow that has been covering us all. And that's going to be noticeable in the, in, in the coming weeks. So now with no further ado, and I will do my best not to miss anyone out. I've got them all written here and hopefully I will just make it through. So, Aries. Is there a work routine that you feel has been holding you back? Is there something that's making you feel restricted, confined? Well, I wonder whether this full moon is saying it's time to make some significant changes. Maybe to let it go completely. Taurus. Note to self. Is there something that you're passionate about that has been worrying you? Yes, doing this presentation tonight, actually. <laughs> For you, this energy helps you see the way forward with crystal clear vision. Gemini. Have you got any concerns about family? Are you worrying about where they're living, your living, living arrangements in general? What I want to say to you, Gemini, don't get stuck in the details. If you get stuck in the details, you won't find the solution. This full moon is offering you a solution. So maybe just look a bit further afield. Cancer. If you've been having difficulties in making your thoughts and feelings truly understood and heard by others, then I really feel this moon is bringing a breakthrough and an easing of tensions for you. I think you'll get heard. Leo. So what's going on with your finance at the moment? I think actually it's quite interesting because I'm wondering if there's going to be some unexpected breakthroughs. There might be a conclusion to a financial issue that um, has been kind of waiting in the wings. Maybe even a financial boost. Ah, Virgo. So, this is your moon. Do you know what, Virgo? I really think you're truly emerging as a much softer, easier person. For you yourself, I think you're feeling, oh yeah, more in your body. And I think other people around you are going to experience you as easier and more spontaneous and adventurous. Libra. This is a reflective moon for you because it feels as if you're questioning, what's this all about? As if you're having a kind of awakening acceptance that you've been strong for too long and that you too need time for yourself to process what's unfolded over the last year and where this leaves you and where you go next. Scorpio. I'm concerned you might be feeling a little bit mentally controlling around the way you want a dream to manifest. 
And I think the energy of this moon is saying, just let go of what you want to happen and let the divine work its magic because you know what? The divine really does know better than you. Sagittarius, if you're wanting changes in your career or your general life direction, your passion, it feels as if you might have to make some choices as to how to balance your passions with your family commitments. But it may just be that you need to, again, take some time out, slow down, sit back and just listen to what others have got to say. Capricorn. Trust the flow, Capricorn. Trust the flow that the divine is guiding you. I really want you to tune in to that vibration of your psyche and your soul. Because the process that your life is currently moving through, the way it's unfolding, unfolding for you, really is taking you in the best direction. You just need to let the divine sail that ship. Aquarius. I really feel you need to allow others to, to sort of to take some of the burden for you, especially if it involves material matters, property, possessions. And if your current focus is really in this kind of solid reality stuff, you really must allow to expect the unexpected. Because what I feel these energies are doing, they're, they're inviting you to be less fixed about outcomes, to allow it to just flow a bit. And now, Pisces, because this is where the sun is. So with the sun in your sign, Pisces, your thoughts are around the significant people in your life, you may find there are some poignant endings as some people move on, or maybe you move on. But remember, every change you experience is for your highest good. And that's true for all of us. And that's one of the things this, this full moon is actually asking us to be aware of. Because for now, Pisces, and for all of us, it's about taking time out, resting, and allowing our souls to heal. Thank you. I hope you found that enlightening. So, Thank you for coming to watch. I also want to say thank you to GIF Magazine for hosting this once again. The next full moon will be at the end of March. I believe it's the 28th. So uh, that'll be the full worm moon in Libra. Um, also, if you want to have an astro coaching session with me, can I recommend you check out the home page of my YouTube channel, which is Astrology with Penny Dix Astro Coach, because there's a very short video there. It's just over a minute, and it's what you can expect from an astro coaching session. And also on my channel now are all the March horoscopes for you to have a look at. So in the meantime, I will be back on March the 13th with the new moon in Pisces. And I look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye for now.